Around 501 BC, the Dionysia was again extended with a dramatic innovation, the satire play. In Greek mythology, satires are half beast, half human companions of Dionysus, often depicted with horse tails and ears. They make up the chorus in a satire play. So, in the 5th century BC, the playwright not only had to produce a trilogy of tragedies, but also a satire play that served as a short afterpiece for the tragedies, providing a kind of comic relief for the serious plays that had gone before. Satire plays were often a burlesque version of a mythological subject, ridiculing gods or heroes, situated in a rural area, with boisterous scenes, a lot of drinking, vigorous dancing and indecent colloquial language. Only one complete satire play is extant, Cyclops by Euripides, based on an episode of the Odyssey. On this famous face, the actors and chorus of a satire play with their masks are shown. The chorus members wear a scanty savage dress of goat skips with a phallus for comic effect. The structure of a satire play is similar to that of a tragedy. Play episodes alternate with choric oaths. Popularity of the satire plays declined. Public preference comedy probably because of its connection with the contemporary events. In the 4th century BC, only one satire play was produced each year for the Dionysus. In 487 BC, the city of Dionysia was extended with the last major dramatic form, the comedy plays. Five comic writers presented a single play, probably on each of five days of the Dionysia. The general structure of old comedy was similar to that of tragedy. Play episodes and chorus alternated rhythmically. However, the chorus of old comedy was often composed of non-human creatures, such as wasps, frogs or even clouds. <laughs> While tragic actors wore elaborate pattern woven garments, which were similar to the robes of priests and musicians, comic actors wore ludicrous costumes, padded at the breast, buttocks and stomach, with long floppy leather phallus for the male characters, not the chorus. The masks of old comedy were distorted caricatures, sometimes of real people. They were meant to be ugly and silly, just as the costumes. It is suggested that on these famous fleox faces from southern Italy, scenes of the old comedy are depicted. The origin of Greek comedy might be found in old Dionysian phallic songs, but also influences from outside Athens, namely the Dorian farces have to be considered particularly comic drama performed in the Dorian colony on the island of Sicily. Sadly, the only remaining comedies of the 5th century are by a single comic poet, Aristophanes. From the 40 plays he seems to have written, 11 have survived. His comedies were largely politically and socially based satire. In outward form, they were the most extravagant of Belasque, in essence, they were the most violent of abuse and personal vilification. He mocked the politicians and other celebrities of Athens. The circumstances of the Dionysia allowed him to get away with criticisms he would not normally be allowed to voice. In a distinctive section of the play, the Parabasis, with a goral ode, the playwright even takes the opportunity at a break in the stage action to discourse at liberty 
on whatever subject he wishes, not necessarily having to do with the play as such. At the height of the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, in 411 BC, Aristophanes produced an anti-war comedy, Lysistrata, in which the women of the two states take an oath to deny men sex until they stop fighting. Now follows a short fragment of this scene. Remember that in Aristophanes' days, the female characters were played by men wearing female masks. Put your hands on the bowl. Repeat for all the rest the solemn terms I will recite. Then you must all swear and pledge to them yourselves. I will not satisfy lover or husband. I will not satisfy lover or husband. Albeit he come to me erect. Albeit he come to me erect. Oh, my I sister, I cannot bear it. I will live unmounted. I will live unmounted. Beautifully dressed in my thinnest gowns. Beautifully dressed in my thinnest gowns. To the end I will inspire when my husband the most ardent longing. To the end I will inspire my husband with the most ardent longings. Never will I give myself voluntarily. Never will I give myself voluntarily. And if he has me by force. And if he has me by force. I will be as cold as ice and never stir a limb. I will be as cold as ice and never stir a limb. Tragedy was at its height in Greek society when that society was at its height, while comedy, an outlet for the frustrations of society, as well as a diversion for the masses, was most popular during the decline of Greek government. In 404 BC, the Athenians lost the Peloponnesian War against Sparta, and in 336, the Macedonian king, Alexander the Great, came to power in Athens. Understandably, in comedy, political issues were ignored and more familial and societal relationships were favoured. This later period is called the period of new comedy. For the first time, love became a principal element in drama, but it was seldom an honest love. The role of the chorus was often diminished, but the dialogue was still cast in verse. In new comedy, costume was based on the dress of ordinary life. Comic masks were more realistic than in old comedy. But in particular, the mask for slaves and certain old men were still caricatured. There is only one all but complete play of a new comedy playwright extant, which is recently discovered, entitled Discalus or the Grouch written in 316 by Minanda. This comedy treats a standard theme in comedy, the disapproval by a parent of a child's choice in marriage with a happy ending. Minanda's characters spoke in the contemporary dialect and concerned themselves not with the great myths of the past, but rather with the everyday affairs of the people of Athens. Discalus was not presented at the Dionysia, but at a smaller drama festival, the Linaia. After the 3rd century BC, comedy began to decline, just as tragedy had a century earlier, and the city of Dionysia dramatic contest ceased in the 1st century AD.